With the engine and transmission nearing completion, there is a few more things we have to do before the engine can go in. And what we're doing in this episode is kind of optional, but removing all of the body panels from the front of the vehicle should make engine and transmission installation a lot easier, and it will make engine troubleshooting a lot easier if there is a problem shortly after installation. So first we're going to go ahead and set the hood aside, we already got started there, and then move on to the bumper, which is held on with four bolts. And from the factory there's these side brace pieces, but I never reinstalled them when I put this bumper on, so the bumper should come off pretty easily with those four bolts removed. Next we'll remove the front grille, and this was actually held on with self-tapping screws because the junkyard grille that I got did not line up with the bolts on this core for some reason. Next we're going to remove the two front fenders, and I actually found this to be the most difficult part, and I'm not exactly sure why, because most of the bolts were up high where they were less likely to rust but these panels gave us quite a bit of trouble. With one side removed, it was time to go through that frustration on the other side. On this side, we'll have to remove a few extra bolts on this rusty battery tray, and look at that, it comes right off. Who would have thought? Oh, nope, just kidding. Hidden bolt down here under the mud. Next, we'll remove these radiator core support bolts and the inner fenders. With the core support bolts and mounts removed, we can go ahead and unplug all of the electrical wiring as well as this antiquated charcoal canister which will not be needed for the swap. Sorry California. We also have to remove this plastic fan shroud which will get caught on the fan if we don't remove it. There are also two hidden bolts down towards the bottom which hold the two halves together which will need to be removed in order to disassemble the shroud. With the two halves separated the shroud actually comes out fairly easily, gaining access to the radiator. However, we'll need to remove these two radiator hoses from, you guessed it, the radiator. With the shrouds and hoses removed, the radiator at this point basically just slides out. And now all that's really left to do is remove the core to reveal this glorious 2.5 liter iron block of under-delivered promises and sadness, but also reliability. Just look at it. This is the engine that delivers your mail if you live in the United States. It only takes 94 horsepower to deliver your Amazon packages. Next, we'll remove the shifter assembly, which will allow clearance of the transmission in the transmission tunnel as we remove the engine and trans. But before we remove the engine, I think it's time for a proper send-off. Let's take this engine to 6,000 RPM instead of its 4,500 RPM redline. Oh, and we removed all the coolant and uh, all that stuff, so that's not particularly good for engines, but uh, who cares? <laughs> You see, strong and reliable, good for a uh, good for mail delivery, but 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 that's pretty much it. With the engine fully sent, I think it is time to take it off of its lifeline, which is not particularly easy to do with vice grips. Now all that's left to do is disconnect all of the electrical and cooling that's left connected to the engine, as well as remove the transmission cross-member bolts and the clutch fluid line going from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder on the transmission. And I decided to leave all of this out because even with two of us taking this truck apart, it was getting later in the day and it was not practical to 
keep filming while trying to work quickly. So I decided to leave it at that, especially since it will be a little bit redundant when I film the installation of the new engine and transmission in a few weeks. I also thought it would be kind of important to show how we went from running and driving truck to stripped down front end where it will be easier to work on the suspension components and the new engine in the coming videos. That concludes the video. Thanks for watching. As you can see by that last little teaser, the engine that's going in the truck actually does run. But uh, if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you can watch us install it in the truck and uh, hopefully it runs. I don't know yet, I haven't gotten to that point at the time of editing this video, so we'll have to find out together. Also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and comment your favorite part of the build so far below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And we'll see you next time.